In this section we're going to be working on uh, the IUPAC nomenclature of nitriles and it really follows the same basic principles of all of our IUPAC naming. Um, we'll find our parent, uh, number it, number and identify our substituent, and assemble our name. Now one thing to take note of that's a little different uh, than many of the functional groups that we name um, in many cases, we would drop the E ending from the corresponding alkane and add some suffix to that. But in the case of nitriles, we'll actually name the alkane and follow it with the term nitrile. So if it's a six carbon parent, it would be hexane nitrile. All right, so we'll look at some different examples here. Um, we'll start pretty simple um, with our first example. And first thing you want to do is find the parent and that's the longest carbon chain that contains the nitrile carbon so here's our nitrile carbon and if we go out our chain we can highlight it the next thing we'll do is number our chain and this carbon that's part of the nitrile is carbon 1 and we'll just number out our chain so in this case we have a 6 carbon parent chain All right, so now we name it as an alkane nitrile so here we have 6 carbons that comes from hexane so our parent name is hexane nitrile. Okay, from here we would number and identify any substituents, but in this example we don't have any substituents to worry about. And then finally, assemble the name. Again, since there's no substituents to put in place, we're just left with our name as hexane nitrile. Okay, our second example is a little more complex, and this time I, um, instead of drawing out the nitrile functional group, I just abbreviated it as a CN. But again, our parent chain contains this nitrile carbon, and our longest carbon chain is this. Okay, from here we can number our chain nitrile carbons one we end up with a five carbon chain we'll name this parent as an alkane nitrile five carbons is pentane so we'll name this as pentane nitrile next step we'll number and identify any substituents and now we do have a couple of substituents on carbon 2 we have an ethyl group and on carbon 3 we have a hydroxy group final thing we have to do is assemble our name We'll alphabetize our substituents and follow it with the parent. Comparing E and H, E comes first, so we'll do 2 ethyl, then 3 hydroxy, and then our parent, we write that in, and it's pentane nitrile. and there's no spaces in this name. Now our third example contains a ring, so we had to treat this a little differently and thinking about the same way we did carboxylic acids attached to a ring, we named the ring and followed that name by carboxylic acid. So in this case, we'll name our ring, 
and follow it by the term carbonitrile. And that's what this is represented. So we're not treating this as a substituent. It is um, the main functional group of the parent. We just have to do it a little bit differently than normal. So what we're going to do is make this ring carbon that contains the nitrile carbon 1. So now the carbon of the nitrile is no longer getting a number. And then we number around our ring to give the lowest substituent numbering. So since there's two groups um, on this carbon, versus 1, it's best to make this carbon 2 and number around the ring counterclockwise. From here, we'll alphabetize and number our substituents. So bromo versus methyl, B comes first alphabetically. So let's do 6 bromo. of 2,2-dimethyl. And we're going to name this as cyclohexane. And now we'll follow this name with carbonitrile. And this carbo term really represents the fact that um, the carbon of the nitrile isn't counted in with the carbon count in the parent. So that's how we name it when the nitrile is on a ring. Our final example is a situation where another functional group takes priority as the parent over the nitrile. So in this case we have a carboxylic acid and the nitrile and a carboxylic acid is a higher priority functional group. So it actually um, gets the parent priority. So our longest carbon chain is going to be this. From here we'll go ahead and number our chain our parent five carbons is pentanoic acid. Since now the nitrile isn't part of the parent, we treat it as just a substituent and we call it a cyano substituent. So now putting our name together, we do our substituents alphabetically followed by the parent. Only one substituent to deal with. We have 4 cyano pentanoic acid. So these cases will cover um, most of the common nitriles uh, that you run into and how to do the IUPAC names for those.